Kia ora guys, it's Mr. Forbes. I'm just going to quickly go through the time series portion of NZ Graphite. I'm just going to have a look at what different graph types we use and how to use them to full effect. So we're going to go down to time series, just the basic one. I'm going to use time for our first variable and I'm just going to use credit just because I think it looks like a nice one. Dang it, it's already ticked. Um, so pretty much it's going to come out like this and you're going to chuck in your title here as per usual on NZ Graphic. You're going to tick long term trend. That will automatically bring up seasonal effect. I don't really like having seasonal effect there because it makes your graph a little bit smushed and it's, we're going to talk about that later anyway. So I untick that personally. A really important thing to do is tick this start slash end points. A lot of people in my class are missing that. Um, so down here you can see that it's, this is the beginning, 1250, whatever the units are, and 2880 is the end point. Um, something to bear in mind when you're finding the average is, look at the ID numbers. So you can see up here the time for the first one is 2003 January, and then the final one is November 2015, and that's 155 points overall. So you divide that number by 12, and then that will give you the number that you divide the overall change by to find out how much it's changing per year. Um, if you're talking about how this changes over time, you're using points on the trend because you're talking about the trend, not like individual data points. So if you hover over this, see how it says credit trend? So that will tell you what the trend is at. So if you wanted to say between um, January, what was the first one again, 2005? January 2003, and it increases up until um, January, February, March, April. Well, you, you should just say 2008. It increases from 2003 to 2008 and use the trend values to say how much it's increasing by. And then it decreases up until, or until 2009 or halfway through 2009 and then give them the value. So use the trend values and you have to hover over them to find them. Might be worth screenshotting if you want to make sure that you know you're talking about the right thing um okay cool so that's trend let's go to recomposition this graph's really useful for when you're talking about residuals another thing to bear in mind with this is that you can hover over residual values and that will tell you exact numbers so that's really important when you're talking about your residuals so i would talk about this one maybe this one maybe this one da 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 da, -da and then that one now remember, you can change the model. So down here, I can go to a multiplicative model. This is an excellence level skill. And then you can see that the model fits maybe slightly better. Who knows, you can talk about that. Um, let's go to seasonal effects. This one's just, you take it at face value. That's pretty much all you wanna do. I would start with additive. You can improve the model later on. So you just copy paste that. Oh, by the way, to copy paste, you just do this. Right click on it and then copy the image and chuck it into your thing. Um, if you hover over, again, if you hover over points, it will give you the seasonal effect at certain points in the year. So if I hover over it here. Anyway, moving on. Uh, forecasts. So forecasts will initially look like this and you can copy paste that in directly. Choose what kind of model you're going for. Um, you then tick this for forecast output. And I'm going to show you a little trick here, which I think is quite cool. So say, so you're making two forecasts, right? So what I would do is I would copy paste this. So let's say I was doing um, January, February, March. I was doing March 2017 and I was doing June 2016. So what I'd do is I would, oh, let me delete this, sorry. I would paste it in like that. What did I say? March 2000 and oh, I said June 2016. So I get this and then delete six rows. And then I said I was doing the other one, so I'll delete everything in between up until there. So if these are your two predict, oh dang, I'm not doing. Delete eight rows. Right. So then you've got your two predictions nicely laid out in a table there. Um, remember, you can't get the marks by just pasting the table in. You have to talk about your predictions. So. Right, you write whatever it is, what your prediction is, maybe put a prediction interval if you're feeling like it. Um, so that's all of the outputs that we need to use for NZ Grapher for time series. So hopefully that is useful for you guys. Cool. Have a nice day.